half of the day, we will be going out to experience something about Taiwan. And you will be grouping in small groups and to taste, you know, or to try different activities. And that's one of the inspirations I had when I joined uh, one of the female founders conference during summer. Um, I think it's a way of connecting. And also it's very interesting to know people rather than only listening, you know, the speakers talk in the conference. So we wanted to make a lot of people connect with each other and especially make it a theme. And it's something you go to once a year in Taiwan. I want to know if anyone is interested in tapioca milk. Yay. So do you say tapioca milk here or bubble, bubble tea? OK, bubble tea. There's a, yeah, Tokyo and Fukuoka people say there's tapioca milk. So I wonder if it's the same thing in Seoul. Yeah. So I think everyone should join us, especially you guys, because you are the product designers, you are the mechanical engineers, you are the students that wanted to understand UX, and also in the open source world. Project that they wanted to see and wanted to hear about it at the summit. So we will invite people, if they are in those favorite rewards, we will invite those team members to join us in Taipei and then be able to do the demo on December 1st. So as I said, this is the third event we have for the international outreach. We, are, we were in Tokyo, in Fukuoka, and we will be in Singapore at the end of the month and then to San Francisco. And we just added one more event in Ho Chi Minh, in Vietnam, um, yesterday because people contacted me <laughs> after. So I was very happy that people wanted to know about us. And we're looking for speakers like you. So it's an English mainly event. We will do translation you know, uh, in Mandarin um, instantly. But you know, it's um, all day, all the conference will be in uh, English. So if you want to be our speaker, it's one of the chances you can come to Taiwan for free. So you know, think about it. And Code and prototypes to uh, make uh, quick design decisions and I noticed that there's a <laughs> client, a uh, member from my club, one of the clients, um, I worked uh, with Best in Global and then he was one of the members. I wasn't working with him but like, I'm happy to see him. Um, so I'll introduce four projects and then this was the first uh, uh, challenge and product I did. Um, this is a world's first uh, modular portable light. The, the module in front, the light module in front, uh, can be coupled with one of the five accessories in the back. So that's um, so if you couple with the bike accessory, for example, and then you can use it as a bike light. And then you can you can use it as a lantern. You can use it as a headlamp. So it, uh, unlike conventional portable lights, where they have one or two buttons to serve only one or two functionalities, um, this product was uh, was aiming to serve um, different functionalities in different situations because Americans tend to um, do ac outdoor activities more than two. So on the left side, I uh, drew one, two, three button interface. I didn't even think about like more than four buttons because it was uh, it felt I felt it was too complicated. And then on the right side, there, there are functions. So I laid out and then imagine how each button is serving uh, those functions. Like one button was a bit too complicated to uh, serve all the functionalities. Three buttons still I wasn't sure with the, with this table. So I started to draw, draw uh, the interface and then made uh, paper prototypes, like three buttons in different styles, four buttons, and then even five buttons that I used um, old I, uh, I Apple TV remote controller. Luckily, I have a, uh, that, that the remote controller have the similar size as the, the flashlight that I was making. All of the uh, offices, and then they started to give me feedbacks. And then it was really helpful, and then they we, even though I spent some time building those prototypes, the decision-making process was very quick. Like everyone, most of us agreed on the four-button interface because that was uh, most intuitive for us. And then we decided to go, f go with it. So that was the final prototype, uh, final product. That we, we had the uh, four buttons and then that uh, goes well with the overall design language I designed. And then there was the first one. The second challenge I got was that I uh, designed one of the Korean music streaming apps, and then there was a uh, unique behavior that is only existing in Korea. So my challenge was that, how do I test whether culturally unique behavior is better than the norm or not? So if you use Spotify or Apple Music or other um, in, uh, service, music streaming services outside Korea, you will, uh, would get a similar screen like on the one on the right. So you, if you have, a, you have a list of songs and then you click one of them, and then it plays right away. That's intuitive, right? 
But all the Korean music apps at the time, and for even now, have the model on the left, which is you have the list of songs, and then you tap on one of them, and then it's selected rather than played. So you select some, some of the songs you want to listen to, and then hit play from the bottom uh, menu. So that's already two step. So we wanted to know if this um, better than the the model on the right, and then we wanted to compare them because, like everybody else outside Korea, I was using the model on the right. So, so I made a prototype. It's one of like I made so many prototypes because I was lucky to have some time to build a prototypes. And then this was the one of the prototype, and then that was working, even though it's black and white, it was working, everything is working as the final uh, product. So you, you can also have a functionality on the right side, you can select songs, still like select songs, and then hit play and then you play. So done uh, by our brand designer, Jun. So he made all those uh, very, uh, various pro uh, clouds in Illustrator, and then I, wanted to make an app that generate those clouds, uh, various clouds, but have the same, uh, co have the consistency. So far, and some of the thought that I have as a designer and developer. Um, let me switch to the presentation image. So, um, I think, I personally think the code and design is all about the language, you know, like, when you think about the code, whatever the JavaScript or like a Java or um, Python or Object C, C++, it's all about the coding language, computer language, in order to communicate with the computer or a machine. So there is a message that user want to send, and they use the computer language to communicate and let the computer to do what they want to do. On the other hand, design, graphic design, which is sometimes called as a visual communication, is a, like a language in order to communicate using the visual symbols or visual message in order to like enhance some part of the message or you know like communicate more efficiently. So I, I personally think that um, both are the language, so they have like a very strong similarity between them. So when you are doing develop, when you are developing something or when you are designing something, you have to more focus on the message inside rather than you know like a like a general process designer make a visual design and send it to the developer and developer like just translate into the code. In that process, the message inside is just fade out. So like my practice is about like focusing on the message inside and just melting down all those developing and designing process into the message. So I'm just focusing on the message and the way to visualize or communicate the message can be a code, can be a visual, can be whatever like a graphic design or like developing process. Archive of the exhibition, but at the same time they want to talk about the behind story of their exhibition. For example, like why they choose this artist, why they why did they do this exhibition, etc. So the information was like, there is the archive of the exhibition, but at the same time, there is a behind story of that archive. So I made a website, which you can actually rotate the website, so see the behind story of it. So the front side works as a general website, but you can rotate it and read the behind story of it. So sitemap can be a slightly different based on the information inside there. And it's a mobile view. And also, since it's about the net art exhibition, which is usually using projector in order to like show the image and the website of them, so I made an image gallery as if they are projected on the wall. So they are slightly distorted, but like you can get the contact. You can scroll, and as if as you touch and drag your finger, you can see like a like a buildings pops out as if they the soul, like represent the soul. And at the same time, it works like a general website as well. For a certain amount of time, it works as like a screensaver and buttons start to move and play the show that they do actually do in their theater. So that's what I'm really focusing on. I'm, I'm really focusing on the message inside and I convert the code and the visuals in order to show the message itself. You to like use the map interaction, such as zooming in, zooming out, you know, like, like dragging and etc. those kind of things. And I was really falling in love with Leaflet.js, which is the JavaScript I, that I mentioned, the JavaScript library. Because, like, first of all, it's really well documented. 
I want to show the image of the website. This is the Lifla website and it's really well documented. You can approach it really easily and you can control very tiny little part of it, such as do you wanna drag when you're dragging do you wanna do you want it to be bouncing or you know how much do you wanna zoom in or zoom out? You can control all those tiny details in there. So I was almost falling falling in love with this with the JS. And um, after I tried to figure more and more about this website, JS, I figured it out that I actually can change the map inside there and I, I actually drag out the map image and put my own image inside. So I adapted that one over there and make it available. I think that's almost all. So sorry.